Welcome to Babe Take a Seat. I'm your host, Janine. If you've landed here, you're probably feeling overwhelmed and maybe a little unsure of your next steps. I've been just where you are now, and it's time to radically change the way women experience life after divorce, life change, and loss. Whether you're new to these life changes or you've been on the road for a while, we're a community of like-minded women who understand what you're going through. We'll talk about finding your voice, trusting yourself, and finding joy in the midst of chaos. So grab a coffee, find a cozy spot, and let's dive in to the beauty, the chaos, and everything in between. (laughs) Welcome to Babe Take a Seat. I'm your host, Janine, and I give women over 40 the tools to build meaningful relationships and find lasting love after divorce. I'm actually really excited for today's podcast, although I don't have any guests, it's just me, and I'm going to keep it to hopefully less than 15 minutes, but I really want to talk about something that's super, super important. Um, We're going to dive into the emotional patterns that shape our relationships, and most importantly, how we can break free from the ones that keep us stuck. So first, I want to share a little bit about my story. Um, I haven't done that a lot. I was in a 20-year marriage that from the outside might have looked like it was fine. In fact, we had many people tell us they thought we had the model relationship, but inside it was a really a different story. And over time, I lost trust in myself, my intuition and my ability to see things clearly. And I found myself caught in a cycle of trying to manage this chaos and ignoring red flags and continuing, um, you know, to cling to the hope that things were going to go back to how they were in the beginning. And we really did have some great times. Um, But it wasn't until I left the marriage and I did some really deep work, intentional work on myself, that I started to understand the patterns that had kept me stuck. And it's not about blaming my ex or even blaming myself. Um, It was really about understanding and recognizing how my subconscious programming and my attachment style had shaped my choices and my reactions. And that work changed everything for me. And it's the reason I do what I do now. So if you've ever felt like you were stuck in the same loop, attracting the same type of partner or falling into the same dynamics, this episode is for you. So I want to start with emotional patterns. These are the repeated ways that we act, react, and connect in relationships, often without even realizing it. They're like the invisible scripts that guide our behavior. And where do these scripts come from? Well, they come from our experiences, especially in childhood. They come from our subconscious mind, which is programmed. It's really programmed to keep you safe, um, but it's, it's, uh, it's programming, it's patterns. Attachment styles play a huge role here, and you probably know by now I am a uh, specialist in integrative attachment theory. Um, so if you have ever heard of anxious or avoidant or secure attachment styles, um, dismissive avoidant, they go by, there's a couple of others that go by a few different names, but you'll know that they are shaped by how we experience love early on in our life, love and connection. So for example, if you had a parent who was really inconsistent or unavailable, you might've developed an anxious attachment style. You might have a fear of abandonment or really need to crave reassurance. And if your caregiver was emotionally distant or overly critical, you might lean toward an avoidance style where you're protecting yourself by keeping people at arm's length. The kicker is that these patterns really run on autopilot, whether you're in relationships that kind of beg for that response or not. These are deeply embedded in our subconscious minds and they drive or rather a subconscious mind drives about 95% of your thoughts, your behaviors, your decisions, and ultimately your actions. So even, even if you want to consciously change to a healthy relationship, your subconscious mind might still be leading you toward the familiar, even if the familiar isn't good or healthy, right? Or good for you or healthy. So I want to talk about how these patterns show up. Um, here are a couple of common examples like ignoring red flags. If you've ever noticed something really um, early on, a behavior or a comment that made you pause, but you brushed it off because you know you didn't want to rock the boat or um, that's often your intuition really trying to warn you, but your programming was telling you to ignore it. And so many women I work with, including myself, really lose um, that deep connection that we've had to intuition. 
Um, because we are programmed to respond differently and to start to doubt ourselves. The far majority of the, of the women I work with, I work with mostly um, women in midlife, have been in relationships or patterns so long that um, they've, really, they've really had trouble reactivating, reigniting that intuition. So that is some of the work that I do with women to, make them, to help them understand that trusting your intuition, reading the cues of your intuition, deciphering and discerning between fear and intuition is a huge part of trusting yourself and having faith in yourself again. But anyway, I digress. Um, <laughs> so your intuition is really, um, it's really important. And a lot of times we lose sight of it. I did myself too. Um, let's see. Uh, choosing emotionally unavailable partners is a huge one for a lot of people. Uh, this might look like always going for the person who's super charming, but non-committal or someone who's more focused on their own needs than on building a partnership. So if this feels familiar, it's likely tied to what you learn to expect from relationships at an earlier age. Um, and again, it doesn't have to be this, you know, there's an understanding that from zero to eight, you know, we really program our first attachment styles, but they can be programmed through other experiences and relationships later in life, particularly, again, with the demographic that I work with. Um, I myself entered my marriage securely attached and I left it anxiously attached. So it took a lot of work to recognize that and to shift the patterns and behaviors and those stories that I had begun to tell myself and really cemented in during the relationship. So um, for my anxious attachment friends, you know, that's a big one. Overcompensating is a big one, rather. Um, <clears throat> you might find yourself overgiving or over explaining or over analyzing hypervigilance in an attempt to keep the peace or to avoid rejection or in some way to try to control what is ultimately you know, uncontrollable. Falling into familiar chaos. Um, if drama feels more natural than calm, you might unconsciously be creating chaotic situations because they match that emotional environment that you're used to. Um, and here is where I do talk a lot with my clients about the emotional frequencies, the energetic frequencies. So one of the ways I am a bit different than other um, coaches that focus on relationship issues is that I have 15 years of experience um, in energetic healing and work. So I really come from the perspective that we are a mind, body, and soul and an energetic system. And it is really the combination of all of these things that create us. So <clears throat> you might speak with someone who says, yeah, we have a conscious mind. We've got our subconscious mind. Under that is the unconscious mind. Yep, that's those are the three stages there. But underneath that is your energetic system. And so I want to help you understand the role that that plays in the patterns that we create and how we can um, use our energetic systems to help shift patterns. Um, boy, I'm really good at digressing. So we talked about that, that, that one. Let's talk about some steps to break free from these patterns. So like, how do you start to break free from these cycles? Let's talk about three likely, um, key steps. So to break free, number one would be self-awareness. It is definitely the first step in recognizing patterns. So take some time to reflect on these past relationships and ask yourself questions like, what drew me to this person in the beginning? What role did I play in this dynamic? What patterns did I see or do I see uh, repeating in that relationship? So it's so much easier when you're looking back and you're like, oh, right, yeah, you start to see start to see the patterns. Be aware of how you felt in the relationship. Because awareness is really, it's the key. It's the key and foundation for change, right? Um, and then, then you're gonna move into reprogramming your subconscious mind. And that's the game changer. So understanding what it was is important and it is the foundation, the first step. But if you're not gonna go back and understand how to reprogram, that subconscious mind, you are, you're just aware of the loops that you're stuck in. So once you've identified your patterns, it is time to rewrite that script. And it can involve practices like hypnosis. I've been doing hypnosis for about 15 years. I utilize it in the work that I do. It's super uh, phenomenal. So um, if you are looking for a hypnotherapist, 
message me and I can get you a list of names. Um, if you're in the area, message me and I'll talk to you. Um, but practices like hypnosis, guided meditation, um, working with a coach, like the work that I do, super important. And then knowing when to work with a therapist. So let's be real. There are, um, there is this real, uh, I think problem in the coaching world that, um, a lot of times people don't understand the difference between coaching and therapy. And I want to remind you that uh, therapists are trained, licensed therapists, and they are there to help um, understand the history and um, the trauma and all of those components. Um, and it's important when you're diving into some really uh, emotional, tough work that you're doing those parts with a therapist. A coach can provide a lot of support um, and take you from this day forward. It's ironic, can take you from this point forward. But um, you wanna be careful that you are not um, engaging in, in work with someone who has really great intentions, but is inadvertently um, causing trauma, you know, um, having you revisit that space. So just a little note, I like to throw that in there as often as I can. I am a coach, I'm not a therapist. I often refer people to therapists if I see that we're getting close to a line there. Um, make sure whatever coach you're working with understands the difference between coaching and therapy and is not afraid to refer you to a therapist when needed. So anyway, again, just trying to download a bunch of information for you, but it's best to understand those root causes. So like somebody just texted me here, what about subconscious reprogramming? Isn't that therapy? It is not, it's not therapy. Um, it can be utilized differently in therapy, but the work that I do with my clients um, stays uh, clear of that boundary there. <clears throat> so I talked a little bit in the beginning about trusting your intuition and how important that is. Rebuilding that trust in yourself is so crucial. Your intuition is your inner compass. And if you've ignored it for years, it's probably going to feel pretty distant. So I want you to start by tuning into those small ways and noticing how your body reacts in different situations. So bring it into that somatic experience, a feeling, okay? Your intuition is, um, it, it can show up in so many ways. And actually, if you're interested in more information on that, comment or, or reach out to me and I'll get you my guide, which is a free guide on how to discern between fear and intuition. And it explains how you can hone and amplify intuition, particularly after you've feel like you've lost touch with it, but noticing how your body reacts in different situations, journaling your gut feelings, and then mapping them. That's explained in the PDF. I won't go into that here, but mapping those um, initial feelings and what the results were are going to help you identify what your particular cues are, because we all have different cues when it comes from in, uh, comes to intuition. Um, <clears throat> And you have to understand sort of what your own code is in order to be really confident in when to just trust that intuitive notion and when to be curious if it's fear or somebody else's rules coming up, right? Um, anyway, I would like to give you a couple of takeaways because I did promise I was going to keep this short and we're looking at 13 minutes already. Um, breaking free from patterns is not about being perfect or fixing yourself. It's about understanding yourself and making intentional choices that align with the love and the life that you truly deserve. And that all starts and is rooted in your subconscious patterns, your unmet needs, your core wounds, and all of those things that are the undercurrent of the ocean that you're swimming in. So if this resonates with you and you are ready to take the next step, I invite you to join my free private Facebook group. It's called Love After Midlife Divorce. And it is a supportive space where we're going to dive deeper into these topics. I do go lives on subjects. In fact, I just did one on this. Um, but it's all about working on building healthier, more fulfilling relationships that are stronger, emphasis on the healthier, and finding lasting love. So I want to thank you so much for joining me today. Remember that you have the power to rewrite your story one step at a time, and I will see you next time. Thanks for joining me for the episode. And if this sort of thing interests you, jump into that Facebook group, and you can also find out more about me at JanineTripodi.com. Message me, comment, reach out however you like. 
Hope you have a great day. Hey, thanks for joining. I hope you enjoyed it and you'll join us again next time. You can reach my guests through the links in the comments below and you can always find me at JanineTripodi.com on Instagram as Janine Tripodi, and on Facebook and YouTube as Janine Tripodi Coaching. If you prefer to watch this video, jump on that YouTube channel, Janine Tripodi Coaching. Have a great day.